Hey Jordan, what's going on? Not much. No? Are you excited for another episode of uh, JJTI, Season 3, Episode 24? Sure. Awesome, I'm glad you're excited. Um, what do you want to talk about today? I don't know, what do you have on your list? Um, well, I got this sick uh, keyboard for my tablet, so it's kind of like I have a laptop. Oh well. But way shittier and it doesn't work as well. But you know. What happened to your laptop? It's slowly breaking again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I need to get a whole new... Did you try to clean it with alcohol again? No. I just got, I bought the wrong screen, and I sort of tried to jam it in, and it worked for a little while, and then it slowly started to break. So, I need to get a whole new top assembly, and that's like $250. So, I'll do it eventually. I'll get around to it. Why don't you just stick with your, uh, your uh, desktop? Hmm? Your desktop. What? How does that help Why me? Why don't you stick with that? Why do you need your laptop? Because I can't use my desktop while I'm doing stuff? What, is, what do you mean? I can't take my desktop with me. You don't have a special spot where you use your computer? In my room, at my desk. Yeah. Which is why it's called a desktop. Right. Yeah. So when I go on vacation and I need to edit need photos... Your, your, your laptop. Well, I need a screen big enough... That I can see the photos to tell if they're out of focus or not. You could probably hook that thingy up to a TV. I know, but I can't bring my desktop. I'm saying that thing. I know. Yeah. This is basically a laptop. Right. What? <laughs> so you can't edit pictures on that? I probably... No, I can't. It's not powerful enough. I can look at pictures on this. It'll take a little while for it to load, but, you know, this is more for taking notes on the, uh, on Predator growling over here. Yeah, I ate, so am I. I ate a little earlier. So I got full growls, you got empty growls. Empty growls. I had, um, um two plain waffles and a, uh, protein shake. That's all you need. Yeah. It's the food pyramid right there. I just, like, I don't really get hungry till like, around, like, now. Right. So... But you don't have time to eat because you got to go pick up dog shit after this. Well, no, I don't have to pick up their dog shit. Hopefully. I just have to pick up whatever. I've gotten, I've moved anything that, that could be destroyed, so I think. Hmm. But. Why do your dogs destroy stuff when you leave? Uh, it's only one of them. Why? It, because it's a dog and it's bored. Yeah, but my dog has never eaten anything. And I've had at least three but dogs. It didn't eat it. It ripped it to shreds. Yeah, my, no dog I've ever owned has ever done that. Uh, I think this is the only one that does. You know what you should do? Punish it? No. Well, kind of. Uh, you punch it in the face. No. Um, what you should do is you should find something like a pillow that would be like prime, prime target. That's what it's been eating. Cover it in super hot hot sauce. <laughs> And then it'll learn that pillows are spicy and you shouldn't eat pillows. Yeah, fill it up with those uh, one chips. Yeah. <laughs> you come back, your dog's dead. It's on fire. It'd probably eat them, too. Unless no, it, would. it definitely yeah. would. Can they handle spicy food? I don't know. I, I don't I've know. just heard that if you want your dog to stop doing something, you oh, cover sauce. the thing in something very spicy, like cayenne pepper. Bear maze. <laughs> Um, my friend told me one time, my friend Josh, um, he said that his dogs have gotten to the point where they won't eat, a if you give them a potato chip, they won't eat it unless it has dip on it. What the hell? Like, they're, they're picky, and I told him that if, if you gave my dog a rock, like you held out your hand with a rock in it, my dog would eat the rock. <laughs> yeah. There's this really cool basset hound. When I was a kid, I was at a, like, my brother's soccer match, and, uh, I was feeding it. Um, pine cones. Yep. And then uh, his owner is another guy who's we later became friends. But mm. he said, uh, you, "Can you stop feeding my dog pine cones?" And I said, "Oh, okay, sure." It's impressive that the dog would eat the pine cone. It ate him. It it was <laughs> loving him. You sure it was a pine cone, not an acorn? It was a pine cone. Okay, I just want to make sure because it was it was crunching. Sometimes you get a little confused with the words. 
a pine cone and an acorn. You said that a dishwasher was a washing machine once. Yeah, so what? <laughs> so I'm just saying sometimes it you say a thing. Stuff. It's a machine that washes. You, sometimes you say a thing and it's different than what the rest of the world I've says. I've never done that before. <laughs> the desire to... I'm going to put a compilation together of you doing that. It's going to be like an hour long. Yeah. I was getting made fun of earlier because I called hernia hornia. <laughs> I don't even... Can't even tell the difference. What? Hernia. Hernia, yep. Hornia. Uh, yeah, one has an O. Yeah. It sounds like. Sounds like horny. Yeah. It also is and in the thing. That, I don't that think. was funny. Yeah, it is funny. It's not funny to me. Well, I don't hear any difference. That's because it's like a, it's like when people say like hot or hot, like Pizza Hut, or I've I'm never hot. heard anybody say that. Hot. I've never heard anybody refer to it as Pizza Hot. Pizza Hut. Yeah, Pizza Hut. Hut and hot are two different words. Hot. So. Hot. That's how I. This is how I say hot. Like, hot. I live in a hut. Yep. And this is how I say I'm hot. 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 <laughs> You're confusing yourself. They're two distinctly I'm different words. I'm very hot right now. No, that's not how you say that. That's, what, that's how I say it. No, you're wrong. Yeah. You're just pronouncing things wrong. But so what? So you're... <laughs> you're like, obviously, you know I'm not saying... a common language. That I'm a hot. We should use it. Jabba the hut Was hot. Not for very long. He got choked up. No, he did. He did, yeah. He was also gross. So, we got a comment on a video. Oh, wow. Would you like me to read this comment? <laughs> Is it mean? No. Oh, yeah, sure. No, there's no death way. threats. We haven't got any of those yet. No. If you want to send us death threats, please do. Not death threats, just like... No, I want death threats. No, those are boring. Well, you be creative. If it's creative death threat, like, you have to describe in great detail... Like, if you have a diagram, like if it's a, some sort of contraption, like a saw sort of thing, I would also like a, a diagram of that. I want like 3D schematics. I really want to know how it would work. You want to 3D print the thing out, get a little model of it? Uh, No, full size. What's going on over here? I don't know what that is. A motorcycle. Is it? Yes. Did you say murder? Mor motor? Motorcycle. Sickle. Yeah. Yeah. I can do it too. Yeah, okay. Then you have no right to say anything. No, when I but do that's it. not how I say it. I was just making fun of you. I don't think you were. I was. No, you were. I know how to pronounce motorcycle. Really? Motorcycle. Motorcycle. Yeah, so do I. I say things wrong on purpose. No, you don't. I do. That's something somebody would say who says things wrong. No, not I do it purpose. all the time. Uh, fuck. What's the. I used to almost tell people when they would ask me where the jalapenos are, I would say, do you mean jalapeno? Because I did it so often in my head. Yeah. That it, I just started saying jalapeno. Bologna. Bologna. Fled, mignon. Yep. I do all that on purpose. There was a guy who called it, um, Fillet Mignon one time, but I don't think yeah. he was, uh, he wasn't, he was he just didn't doing know. it as a, yeah. Well, you know, it's a rich person's food. It's true. The poor might have only read it on a menu and never heard it expressed. Somebody tried to tell me that a Fillet Mignon. Um, wasn't a cut of meat. Um, they said that it was the dish, and I said no, it's the cut of the meat. Yeah, it's just a tenderloin steak. And they said, no, it's a tenderloin. I said, like, no, the tenderloin is like the whole thing. Yeah, this is like a specific cut. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I. <sighs> People are stupid. <laughs> It's the whole thing, like I was saying the other week, where I have to be right about stuff. But, like I said, most of the time, I am right. <laughs> See, I don't give a shit. Because I don't start arguments like that unless I'm relatively confident that I'm correct. I don't go into something, unless it's, like, way the other way, and I know I'm wrong, but it's funny, then I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah. Like how I could fight any animal. <laughs> what was the one I was going to fight? You were going to fight a silverback gorilla. Oh, yeah. That thing would fuck me up. No, it would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure they can rip your arms and legs off. Oh, like, yeah, they uh, can. Like, easily. Very easily, yes. Um, They wouldn't because they're a... Uh... 
what do they say in Spinal Tap? They're they're peaceful bread eating creatures. <laughs> Although I don't as a that. as a race that was in like a deleted scene. As a race they've developed no baking skill. <laughs> that movie's so funny. There's that clip uh <laughs> where they they the guy left and they have to go do a show with the puppet theater or whatever and they can't play any of their music. So the bass guy's like jazz odyssey. And they get out there and they're just doing random like jazz, but it's not structured in any way. And the main singer is like, This is written by Derek, whatever. This is his fault. And it's just like most of the stadium is well, it's not a stadium, it's like a sh- puppet show. And most of it's empty. And there's just one guy at the front <laughs> doing this the entire time. <laughs> it's a really funny movie. Um, anyway, back to this comment. Um, I can't make it bigger. Hold on. Hi. I live in Finland, and my two-year-old... Oh, my God. ...accidentally searched JJTI in YouTube. (laughs) Now I'm listening to your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell? So, uh, you know... Finland, wow. We're, uh, we're a global podcast. My uh, my tablet's kind of freaking out right now. Oh, yeah. We had a uh, student from Finland that lived with us for a year, some years ago. Did they have a two-year-old? He's um, thinking? He's thinking about it? Well, I think she would probably say who she was, but yeah, she might have a two-year-old now. I don't know how long. I don't know. I don't know how old. This I comment was from four days ago. I don't know. That's Irina. Hello. How are you doing? The username is... I can't pronounce that. Show it to me. Uh, no. <laughs> that would take too much work. <laughs> it wasn't Irina. <laughs> um, a lot of big news. My stomach's doing that thing. I had a dictionary from uh, <laughs> Finland that she left me. And I was looking through it, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Yeah, that part of the world has there's like There's like 10 rules. different words for dog. And I was yeah, like, was what the hell? Real, weird language rules. I was like, well, that's out the window. There's a, in Sweden, there's this woman I follow. Just, you know, in my day-to-day life around town. Um, there's this YouTuber I like. Her name is Simone Yetch. And her last name is spelled G-I-E-R-T-Z, I think. But it's pronounced Yetch. <laughs> is she a gamer? No. She's an engineer. She builds robots. Oh. She's cool. Robots she... of mass destruction. No, she says that she's the queen of shitty robots because she builds robots that are, they just kind of sort of work. And they don't really do anything. <laughs> Why are you watching? You're watching this because you think she's pretty. No. Uh, she is pretty, but I watch it because she's very funny. Like, it's her... Like, you would think, like, she would, it's like, you would think it would be an educational thing, but it's not. It's just her being like, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's her Send it to just me. swearing at stuff. She built a, an arm out of glass. <laughs> like a robot arm out of glass, and it kept breaking. She's, like, smashing her head on the table. <laughs> yeah, glass isn't really the, the yeah. kind of material you want for, for that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. She found that out. She's very nice, and she had a brain tumor, and uh, they took it out, and now she's fine. I think she named it Steven or something. Steven the brain tumor. Yeah. She's very cool. I like her a lot. Um, so, a lot of t- stuff to talk about. So, I got new internet last week. You've already talked about that. The story continues, my friend. So, we recorded the podcast on Saturday, exactly one week ago. Um... At that point, I had had internet for about four hours. New internet. Sunday rolls around. Wake up bright and early. Start editing the podcast. Get it all edited. Upload. Super fast. Love the new internet. Around five o'clock. Uh, my phone starts to buffer a little bit. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Kicks right back in. Totally fine. I was like, oh, that was interesting. And then I looked at the light. And it was red. I was told very explicitly that if it turns red, that's bad. So I looked at my phone again, and I realized I was on my data. 
So it had kicked me off my internet. And I was like, oh, okay. Maybe they're figuring something out. So I reset it like they showed me. Turns back on. Does all the blinking lights and everything. Uh, I come back a few minutes later. Red. Cool. Try it again. Red. Unplug it. Leave it for like five minutes. Come back. Plug it back in. Red. Unplug that and the router. Leave them for like ten minutes. Come back. Plug them both in. Red. At this point, it's like... 7 o'clock on a Sunday. So I don't bother calling because nobody's going to pick up. So Monday morning rolls around. I wake up early, go to work. I'm at work, I get a phone call around 8 o'clock in the morning. They say, hey, we just noticed that uh, your internet's not working. I said, oh, that's cool. I noticed that too. Um, okay. It's still working. <laughs> it stuttered there for a second. I thought it froze again. Um, and they said, okay, uh, we're going to, we're going to help you. And I was like, okay, I'm not at my house right now. <laughs> and also I, I did all the steps and they're like, oh, okay, well, that's too bad. It's <laughs> like, yeah, thanks. Um, we'll send it to the, like the regional people and they'll fix it. I was like, cool. So I get a text with the account details and like the ticket. And it says, we'll have this done by 7 PM. I was like, awesome come home uh i still have my spectrum modem plug that all back in so i have internet um which that's another story the ups guy cock blocked me and wouldn't let me send it back uh luckily i guess but seven o'clock rolls around still not working look back at the text it was 7 p.m the next day so i was like okay Totally fine. The next day rolls around. Two, we're at Tuesday at this point, right? I have to go to the dentist after work. So I get home a little early. I'm changing, you know, getting ready to go to the dentist. Get a phone call. Hey, are you at home right now? Yes, but I'm about to leave. <laughs> oh, well, we're not going to have anybody... Uh, over there at the time that you're going to get back. So we'll do it tomorrow. I was like, okay, cool. Wednesday. Get a phone call. Pretty early in the morning, 7 or 8 o'clock. It's the uh, technician. And he says, are you going to be home at 4 p.m.? And I said, yes. I will definitely be home at 4 p.m. today. I'm home around 3. 4 p.m. rolls around. Nothing. 4.10 rolls around. Nothing. Okay. Maybe it's a little late. I wait until 5. <laughs> Still nothing. Um, so I call. And I say, hey. I was supposed to have a person out to fix this. And I didn't get any notification. And nothing has been fixed. <laughs> and the lady was very nice. And she said, oh, it looks like the ticket was closed. <laughs> I went, cool. I don't have internet. <laughs> So she did the standard thing of like, okay, well, let's reset it. I was like, okay, I know that's not going to work, but let's go for it. Um, reset it, still didn't work. Awesome. Right. So she puts in another thing. Wake up the next morning. We're on Thursday now. We have gone, what's, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we're five days without internet. <sighs> go to work. Get a call around 10 o'clock. It's the technician. And he says, hey. I'm five minutes away. And I was like, okay, cool. I have a job, so I'm not at home. Why would, why he would assume that I was at home at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, I do not know. Very bold, I think. But I explained, Bino, shush. I explained that they had told me that the problem was probably outside because I had done all of the things that I could do on the inside. And he said, okay. I'll try and fix it on the outside. And if that doesn't work, I'll call you and we'll figure something else out. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was, uh, you know, went back to work, did my thing. Get through the day, get home. I have internet again. So I checked my security camera and I'm looking at them. And it must have been very serious because they got the big ladder out and they were doing stuff on the pole. 
so it wasn't like they did a connection thing in the box wrong. And they were out there for like two hours. So I don't know what they did originally, but it was fucked up. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he was looking at it in horror. I mean, maybe. <laughs> there were two of them. They were like just looking <laughs> for a while. I don't know. Maybe they were confused. Um, but then I unplugged <laughs> because I took everything out from where it was and I moved it sort of down out so that if they needed to come in and mess with it, it would be accessible. You know, I was trying to be courteous. Um, so I unplugged everything, moved it all back, and plugged it back in. Red light comes up. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. So then I reset it, and it came back, and it was fine. So I've had internet for like three days now. Rock solid. Love it. Bina! It's great. Do you like how my cat's fucking dying over there? What's he doing in the bathroom? He's probably taking a shit. Is that where his litter box is? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't train him how to use the toilet? Uh, like I thought about it, but I'm too lazy. Well, so then I have to leave my toilet seat up. Man, my hands are getting all banged up. Crushed this finger. I stabbed this finger. I burned this, this finger. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good right there. Yeah. All right. What are you trying to do there? What? Why are you breaking your hands? I'm not. I just well, burned I mean, this are. on a cigarette and stabbed myself with a saw and then uh, crushed my finger. Trying to play piano? Trying to close the piano. Wouldn't have happened if you uh, weren't playing it? Weren't playing it. Well, I could be one of those people who doesn't care about the, uh, the keys. Fuck art. It. <laughs> if the thing still has ivory keys, it's kind of weird. Does it have actual ivory keys? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. How sure? Like, positive. How positive? 100%. I don't know. How old's the piano? Old as shit. How old? I don't, I don't fucking know. Because they stopped doing ivory a long time ago. Yeah, I know. This is an old piano. Is that why it bit you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Just getting revenge? For all the elephants you killed to make that piano? Yeah. Elephant tusks. You can really get a whole piano out of one elephant, though. If you think about it, a piano key is not very big. No, and it's like just the coating, like it's not like it's the whole thing. So, I don't know what the point of that was, though. To kill all the elephants? No, the ivory keys. Is it just like it looks pretty? What they? Yeah, is it like a pretty thing? Or it, like it lasts a long time? Yeah. Okay. Like if you look at old ivory pool balls, they still look good. Well, when they stop doing this, but shit. if you look at the the ones that they made immediately after, they look like shit now. Um. Yeah. So. It's also like the way they feel when you play the piano too. Ah, I don't play piano because I'm not a nerd. So uh, anyway, on to Superman and Lois Lane casting news. <laughs> no, that sounds terrible. You don't know anything. I don't like Superman. Why? It's just boring. Why? You you can't say that. Why not? He's not boring. He's an incredibly interesting character. He's the original he's superhero. He's like indestructible. He's not he's indestructible. Like, yeah, he, he pretty much is. He's not. Have you seen a Superman the, movie? Um, no. Do, I don't like Superman. You can't come at me. I've seen you, the that, one with Batman. Hold on. Here, I have audio evidence of you chastising me. For criticizing the Tim Burton Batman movies. Movies that I've seen. It actually wasn't that long ago. Many times. Trade of Ivory was banned in uh, 1989. In America? Like, everywhere, I guess. Yeah, they might have banned it earlier in America, though. Yeah. Because they have weird rules. Banned in the U.S.? The U.S.A. Uh, commercial trade... I don't know. I don't know. This is weird. So anyway, you chastise me for criticizing Batman movies that I've seen multiple times. I've and seen yet, a Superman and movie. Yet, I've seen and there's yet. a Superman cartoon that came out you, you, way, way back. You say Superman's a boring character. So Having boring, not I don't want to watch it. Any of the movies. I have seen the movies. I saw one of the 
the old ones, and I've seen some cartoons. Which cartoons? Like the like the really really old ones. There are a lot of really old ones. I don't know. It was like from the fucking thirties or was some it shit. Was the Fleischer Superman cartoons? The one that just looks weird. Like it's like it's just old, super old. They <laughs> like really old. They all look like that. They've been making Superman cartoons. What was the first the one that came out? The entire time. It was the Fleischer Superman cartoons. That was probably that. It's the know. ones that inspired Godzilla. Godzilla? It also made it so Superman could fly. Before that, Superman couldn't fly. Fleischer Superman? Yeah. I'm getting bored just thinking about it. He also invented the rotoscope. Yeah, that's the one I saw. That's amazing. Those shorts are great. No, that is pretty cool, actually. This looks like a job for Superman. He fights a giant fucking lizard <laughs> monster. I guess I just think it's weird that he doesn't wear a mask. I think that's that's the, the one that's thing. his whole point. Is like you can trust me because I don't wear a mask. Yeah, but everybody know who he is. No, he shows up like he works with Lois Lane, right? Yeah, she knows. She knows he's Superman. They're married. They've had what? children together. When? When did this happen? In the seventies, like they, she didn't recognize him when he first came down, though, right? Man, yeah, there's a lot of Christopher. Here. Yeah, well, you know, Sunday, Saturday evening before Fourth of July. You know, yeah. um, Christopher Reeve would go around in his Clark Kent outfit, and nobody would recognize him after those movies came out. But he would, you know, do a thing as Superman, and everybody would flock to him. Same with Henry Cavill. He would wear a yeah, Superman shirt before. and the glasses. Nobody. Because you weren't looking for it. You just see a dipshit in glasses. And it's also like how he holds himself. You know? You slouch your shoulders forward. You drop like two or I'm three inches. I'm just saying like if he if he's like yeah sure like they don't they recognize Superman they don't recognize him mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Yes. So <laughs> When Superman uh, comes out, like, in front of his boss or something, his mm -hmm. boss is not going to recognize him as the hunched-over, glasses-wearing guy. Think about it. You see this guy who's a loser. Yeah. Who is just, like, fumbling around, horrible with women, really good at his job, but a, a giant fucking nerd. And then there's Superman, who's just, like, the coolest. You're not going to put those two together. I think you would if you saw the face. No. You don't take your glass. I recognize you with glasses, and I recognize you without glasses. That's because I wear glasses and don't wear glasses regularly. No, it's not. It is. No. You're telling me if I just if came in I here with glasses, you would be like, who is that guy? If I was walking down the street and you passed me, and I never wore glasses, and then I was wearing it, but I was wearing glasses and combed my hair completely differently, you would not bat an eye. I bet I would. No, you wouldn't. Fine. Test it out. Also, well, I wear glasses. <laughs> Test it out. Do it. Um, and also, Superman can like do things like vibrate his face, so you can't really see it. Flash can do it, too. These are two characters that I don't really care about. Yeah. But what is it? What, is there a new Superman movie coming yes. out? Yes. <laughs> and what is it? You want to talk about stuff. You say that we need structure. We, we need do. to talk about movies. We need to talk about this. I try to talk about it, and then you and don't then know and anything then it's about it. Superman. This is what's in. All this right. is popular. Well, what what is it called? What is this? Superman Legacy. And it's just, it's got the same guy playing a uh, no Superman new casting new cast. Well, maybe is there a trailer? No, they haven't started making the movie yet. No, oh. they finished the script like six months ago. Two thousand twenty-five. Yes, this is a while before this comes out. I, it's a big deal. <laughs> this is James Gunn's baby. Director James Gunn. Well, I'll give it a chance. Could be good. You won't, you liar. Is I mean, you a, have to because we're going to do it for the podcast. It's a cartoon. No. There's a picture of a cartoon. There's also a new cartoon coming out. No. Okay. Like three days from now. A cartoon I don't give a fuck about. Because fuck art. But, you know, the guy kind of looks like Superman and the girl kind of looks like Lois Lane, so. I don't recognize either of them. 
so I can't speak to their acting ability. <laughs> but, you know. Sure, why not? I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. That's it. There's just the Superman movies coming out. That's Yeah. Okay. It's a it, Superman is a good character. He's an interesting character. If you had seen any of the good stories with Superman or read any of the good comic books with Superman, you would think so. I think it just like all goes back to when I was a kid. We Did had you this, get beat uh, up by somebody dressed as Superman? No. <laughs> I got this um, Nintendo 64 game. No, boy. Which was Superman. Yeah, and the rings. And it was yeah, impossible. I know, I know. I know about Superman 64. <laughs> so I thought that game was going to be cool, right? Because it had Superman on it. And then that's what I got. And I think that's just like all I... I think that is but what most, started the... Uh, my, most my... video games are bad. Well, I mean... Don't even try to argue. Most video games are bad. <laughs> probably, yeah. Because there's what, like 70 N64 games that came out or something like I that? I don't know. I didn't have an N64 because I'm not old. <laughs> could still have one. I'd love to still have one. Um, You can buy one. Yeah. You can just do that. You could solve that paradox where you could buy Superman They're 64 and though. beat it. No, you can't. You I've could. watched videos. I As don't think adult, you can. You can't beat it. I could. I don't think you I can. I could. Yeah. I'm a I, I professional I video watched gamer. Like a, <laughs> I watched a gaming thing on it. I could beat it. And uh, the guy could not get past. Like, he, he got further than I did, but I don't think he ever beat it. Like, it basically, it was a like a... It was a broken game well, that yeah. they sold. Like in in a game you could not possibly yeah, beat. Of course. There were a couple games that came out like that, like the Scooby Doo N sixty four game. Yep. That okay, second the monster starts chasing you, right? The the dog, Scooby Doo. He would like block you in a hallway. Yeah. Like it would glitch out like that. So he would be like running like in the hallway so you couldn't get past him. Right. And then the thing would kill you. Every time. So I thought Classic the game Scooby was... Doo. Yeah, but I, I went on YouTube and it turns out like, I guess that was just my issue. And I was like, I wrote and I was like, how did Scooby-Doo not trap you guys in the room? Because they beat the whole game. And somebody like wrote back to me. He's like, here's what you got to do. And I was like, dude, I don't have the game anymore. I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always a workaround. Uh, no, I wish... Uh, no, I wish my brother didn't sell that stuff. Some of the old Mario Kart games, the AI would just cheat. <laughs> The AI. <laughs> well, no, Mario Kart for a Nintendo 64, there were like a bunch of glitches you could do where mm -hmm. if you like spun around a bunch of times, it would shoot you over like this yep. edge. So you'd automatically be in first place. It was dumb. Yeah. A lot of broken games back in the day. Yeah. Less so now. Well, depends on what you define as broken. Um, I'm excited for Superman. Sure, I'm, I'm. I think it's gonna be good. I'm really excited. I'm going. You're gonna. You're, you're gonna go see it. You're gonna enjoy it. I'm calling it now. It's just that it's like two years from now. Yeah, a year and a half. So I'm not. I don't usually get excited about stuff like. Yeah, I'm excited. Two years. You're not excited for the Batman too. When's that coming out in two years? 2025. <laughs> Maybe 2026. I mean, no, I guess. The next Spider Verse movie is probably gonna get delayed. From next year to like three years from now. Why? Because, um, <laughs> oh, something happened. Wow. Well, all of the workers, yeah, uh, were had to work like 12 hour days, six and a half days a week <laughs> to okay. get that movie to be made. And they weren't paid overtime and stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that why there's a writer's strike? Uh, part of the reason, <laughs> but it's just like they, they barely got this movie out. And then they're like, oh, we have to do another one in. A fifth the time. <laughs> so uh, they that said no. might not happen. Um, I've heard that they don't even have like a script done for that movie. And it's expected to be out next year. Yeah, that's a... So I don't think that's, that's going to happen. Problem. Good movie, though. Yeah. Next note. New Paul McCartney book. Paul McCartney book. Yeah, Did with a bunch of photos. Oh. That he took. That he took. Oh, yeah. well. 
It was, uh, like he bought a camera and he was just taking them right as the Beatles, like, started to take off. So it's him. Like, it's just a bunch of random photos of the Beatles in their earlier days. And you're gonna buy it? No. <laughs> not for the full price. What's it, like 50 bucks? 45. <laughs> 45 bucks. Hardcover? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a high quality book. I mean, it's not, it's not an outrageous price for what it is. Um, I just don't care enough. But I would like to see it. Like, there's a lot of stuff. If you listen to the Conan O'Brien interview he did with Paul McCartney. Is that a recent one? Yeah. I'll check that out tonight. Because they were talking about this book. And it's a lot of, like, you know, because it was Paul McCartney taking the photos, you get a lot more, like, real stuff. Like, with how John Lennon acts and stuff. Eyes of the Storm? Yes. You get a lot of what? You get a lot of, like, nobody's on guard. Yeah. Because it's, you know, Paul McCartney and not, like, a photographer. And there's a lot of weird stuff. Like, he's just taking photos of crowds and there's a chimpanzee at the airport. <laughs> it's very funny. Spiral bound with the 123? That was a spiral bound book. Like, uh... Like, just woven up. Yeah. So you're going to pay. I'm not paying shit, first of all. Yeah, I know you're not, but I don't know who would want to pay, like, that much more money. $123 for a book. I mean, I bought stuff. You bought a book for 120 something dollars I bought a book for 80 something dollars It was a comic book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, like, that thick. I still haven't finished it. I bought all that guy's books. Those were all like 45 bucks. Nerd. 30 to 45. Freaking loser. All right. Uh, I watched Casablanca the other day. <laughs> you ever seen Casablanca, Jordan? Which one's that? It's the old one. The Return the Map one? No. It's the one where the guy escaped the concentration camp and he's in this, he's in Casablanca at this bar that's run by, what's his face? And it's like a famous bar in the area. And then the Nazis are there and they're like trying to get this guy, but they can't because it's non-occupied soil or something. It's pretty good. Casablanca, 1942. Yeah. <clears throat> it's very interesting. No, it's got an 8.5 out of 10. It was pretty good. That um, was re uh, released on my birthday. Uh, 1943. The date's wrong, but... Yeah. It was the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, It's very interesting, because I was watching... Uh, There's a pretty cool documentary series on HBO right now uh, called 100 Years of Warner Brothers, and it's four parts, and each one's an hour long. And there were, like, the first part is the very beginning of them founding the studio and how they, you know, made movies back then. And it, then it evolves into, like, Taxi Driver <laughs> and stuff. And now we're in the era of, like, Batman. We're talking about stuff like that. But um, there's a scene in Casablanca where the German, the Nazis are singing some German song, being real dickheads. So all the French people start singing a French song way more loud to drown out the Nazis being Nazis. And you see all of the people are crying while they do it. And it's because they're real French refugees <laughs> who are trying to get away from the Nazis. <laughs> it's like a really moving moment when yeah, you know that. 42. Yeah. And then at the end there's, um, there's this whole thing where the sort of the main guy, they talk about how, oh, you were on, you fought for these people and you helped these people in these conflicts and you lost both times. And he's like, well, they paid me. And they're like, well, you know, the winning side probably would have paid you more. And he's like, eh. you know, he's kind of trying to be like, oh, I don't care about any of this, but he actually does care. One of those situations. But at the end, he's talking to the guy who escaped. He was like this resistance leader. And there he says, you know, this time we're going to win. But they absolutely didn't know that. 
because it was made way before they knew that yeah that'd be kind of that, that was like before the united states got involved in stuff i wonder if that would have been like destroyed if the axis like won it's very interesting to learn about the history of stuff like that because they do really cool stuff. Like Warner Brothers, as a company, they made that when it was not cool to do that. Like, if you actually look back, most people in America before Pearl Harbor happened um, were very anti war. They did not want to get involved. And most film studios, they like had a Nazi dude in America to vet films to make sure they didn't say anything bad about Nazis or Hitler. But Warner Brothers said, no, fuck that, because they were all Jewish. They were like, no, fuck that. This is wrong, and we're going to make movies about how it's wrong. And they got slaughtered. Like, they got review bombed and stuff, and people hate, like, all this stuff. And you're like, wow, that's really cool that they did that. But then during the Great Depression... They did all they in order to save money and make sure the studio didn't go out of business. They slashed all everybody's salary by fifty percent, except for the Warner Brothers. <laughs> so it's like they do a really cool thing, but then they also do a really shitty. Thing. <laughs> yeah, you'd think they would want. Uh, well, we would have already entered the war at that point. Forty-two. Yeah, but not when they were filming it. Oh, when they start the filming. Probably a while before that. Like, they probably could pump that out, like, pretty quick. I don't think... I think it was a lot harder to make a movie in 1940s compared to... Compared to now? Well, there's, like, this there's weird no bell curve. There's no special effects or anything. Yeah, but you have to, like, film everything. It probably took, like, a million years to develop all the film. <laughs> you know, cut it all together, ship it all out, make sure everything... Because yeah. it was sound, sound was relatively new. Well... Make sure the sound worked go back in and record over all the sound because it probably sounded like shit on the day because you hear like seagulls and stuff in the background <laughs> you know like I'm sure it was probably started filming in like 1940 late 1940 early 1941 I don't know like to me it just seems like also there's a war going on so maybe there's other priorities yeah you know <clears throat> but you know it's just it's cool that at some point, they were good. <laughs> sometimes. You know? You know what I sometimes mean? they were good, sometimes. Sometimes they were good, sometimes. So this is uh, the last thing I have on my list. Musk and Zuck are gonna fight. Oh yeah, I saw that. What is that? Is that real? <laughs> well, my next uh, line might answer that for you. Who cares? <laughs> I do. I want to see that. Happen. Uh, I think that Musk said that. That's my that's my my guy right there. This Musk said that he was gonna fight Zuckerberg, and Zuckerberg <laughs> was like, "Okay, let's go." What if it's like they? It's not even like a cage match. Zuckerberg will win that fight. You think so? Yeah. Why? Because he does like jujitsu tournaments. Oh, he's actually he's in like shape. a black belt in <clears throat> multiple martial arts. And Musk isn't. No. <laughs> But can they use weapons? Because I feel like he I could don't think that something. matters. <laughs> Musk. I would be more concerned about Zuckerberg with a knife a... than uh, Musk with a gun. Not a. I don't mean that. I mean, like, could he like send a rocket out and <laughs> no. just blow up Zuckerberg? But Zuckerberg is like extremely healthy, in very good shape. I was Musk just watching isn't... a thing earlier where he did this challenge, <laughs> where you run a mile, then after a mile. You do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, mm -hmm. 300 squats, and then you run another mile, and you do all of that wearing a 20-pound bag, like and a backpack. Pass out. And, and he did dive. it in 40 minutes. What the hell? Yeah. 40 minutes? Yeah. He ran two miles. Yeah. That's not that hard. <laughs> so he ran a mile... About 40 minutes. I can walk two miles in about 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Less than. Probably okay. about half an hour. I guess maybe that's... I mean, that's still impressive. Yeah. I don't think I could do it. I definitely couldn't do it. I yeah. would die after that first mile. <laughs> I would die five feet into that first mile. Yeah, you almost died on a mountain. Yeah, well, I was carrying a 40-pound bag. A 40-pound bag. That's yes. not even a lot. 
It's not. And it's funny because when you took the bag, you slowed down a lot. Because I had my bag on as well. And I was, uh, but you're also in remarkably better shape than I am in terms of climbing mountains. I don't know how. Because I don't climb mountains all the time, Jordan. Go climb a mountain. Nah, I'm bored. I'd rather edit stuff on my computer. Yeah. I've been editing clips out of these and uploading them. Just random Like clips. a little two, two, three minute clip. That's the way to do it. So then people can maybe watch that and then... Be more entertained Be in by Finland. It. And they're two-year-old. We are aiming for the two-year-old demographic. I feel. I think it just typed two random <laughs> letters. Because it's two. Or it. Why am I calling it an it? You don't know the gender of this right. child. You're being respectful. Yeah. It. It. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, we got one. Uh, we have at least one view on a video. Let's kick ass. So it's pretty cool. Um, do anything fun for the 4th of July? I'm going to be working. Isn't where you work closed on the 4th of July? No, are you kidding? That's like the best day. To... It only closes for two days. That's or not true. Closes for Easter, closes for... Christmas and it closes for Thanksgiving. That's it. I feel like there was another one in there. Nope. So what you're saying is you you work in a place that's un-American? Oh, it's American. You communist? It's very American. Communist bastard? Because it's when we do our, our greatest sales. How do you feel about healthcare? Of, of the year. <laughs> healthcare? Should be illegal. Can I... <laughs> I need to bring something up. And I know, I know that this is going to come back to bite me in the ass at some point, but I have to talk about it. What? Tell my word. I got into a conversation at work the other day. And I... We were talking about whether or not concrete could be considered a rock. <laughs> it's not. This is really bizarre. Because we were working at a concrete place. We were doing some painting in a concrete place. And I said, no, it can't, it's not a rock. And he was like, why is it not a rock? And I was like, because it's made by people. A rock is just a rock, you know? <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. Sure, it's just a rock. So then I was asked to prove it. So I looked it up, and I found, like, four, def four like, um, the first four things immediately were all like, no, it's not a, it's not a fucking rock idiot. It said that? No. <laughs> so then we started talking about uh, layering in rocks. And he was like, how does that work? And I said, well, like wind or water will erode a bigger rock. And that will like deposit little bits. And then eventually more stuff will fall on top of it and it'll compress into a solid layer and then as like things change you get different ratios of different kinds of rocks from different areas so then you get like different layers and he's like well how what how do you I don't remember how exactly how we got to this leap but we were talking about how you could tell how old stuff was and I was like well you do like radio master dating on stuff and you can tell how old it is he was like, but that's not accurate. I said, no, it is. It's very accurate. He's like, well, how come you can do this thing and it's not accurate? And I was like, well, it's not accurate for that one specific thing. But it's, that's like saying x-rays aren't accurate because it can't get through lead. Like, yeah, it can't get through lead, but it can get through a person. So it's very accurate, you know? Um, <laughs> for what you're doing. Yeah, like you, you have to accept that there are things, like a tool can't be good at everything. It's good at some things. Um, unless you're Superman. Um, <laughs> Stupid man. And then, blank man. And then we were talking about, he said, have you ever seen the videos of Bill Nye debating creationists? And I was like, yeah, sure. He said, they run circles around him. 
because he knows that they're right. So he no, changes, he's just terrible. So he changes the subject. And I was like, I think he just realizes that they're not going to accept reason. So he moves on. Bill Nye the science guy? Yeah. Uh, um, no, he's... he's <laughs> and then... Yeah. Um, that, whatever, ended. And then at like 9 o'clock at night, I get a text. It's like, this is a, a brief video explaining how rock layers don't work or something. I forget how, what the wording was. Man, but this it, guy got obsessed with this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a video, and I started, I didn't want to watch it, but I was like, if I'm going to seriously like acknowledge this, I need to at least try. So I started to watch it. And it was this. Th- it was a video, and the title was something like "How Rock Layers and Fossils Disprove Evolution." <laughs> it's like okay, going for a trip, and uh, started watching. And it was um, this guy on a stage, and he was explaining how we've been lied to our whole lives. Oh, of course. And something about I was really struggling to pay attention to this. Something about how when you see a textbook and they show you a diagram of like evolution and all the fossils and stuff, um, that's not real. But the rock layers are real. The fossils are real. The order the fossils appear in are real. The problem is they don't show you every fossil. Why do you think that might be, Jordan? Is it potentially because there's hundreds of thousands of fossils what do you mean they don't show you every fossil that's what the guy said he said they don't show you all the fossils in the book yeah then buy a different book or get on the internet and he was like that's all they only show you the fossils that conform to evolution i was like well they they would show the ones ones that are pertinent show me what you're talking about um and then i was like okay this is taking a weird turn but i'm still with it Let's go. Where I bailed was when we got to the point of him saying, well, how do we know that this is false? Well, let's look at the Bible. And that's where I was gone. I was out. It's like, this is not science. (laughs) How do you... (laughs) Listen, I've said it a million times. I don't care what you believe, but you can't use what you believe to justify just being wrong. Of course you can. This is America. (laughs) Like, it was literally like the the Always Sunny scene. (laughs) I won't change my mind because I'm an American. (laughs) I don't have to change my mind. I'm dug in and I won't. (laughs) Science is a liar sometimes. Making everyone on Earth look like a bitch. <laughs> okay. But it's like, we gotta wrap up. Yeah. But it's, you can't, it's, you just don't understand is the thing. Like, you just don't understand it. And you're relying on this catch-all thing to explain something that you don't understand. And you can't take that and try to pass it off as fact. I am very pro-science. And I don't... I hate... I fucking hate it. When we give people who are using things like religious texts or fucking ESP or whatever... When they, we give these people a stage and they say, like, this is a fact. Because it's not. Again, if you want to believe in ghosts, totally fine. If you want to believe in ESP, totally fine. If you want to believe in those rods that find water, totally fine. But until you go into a fucking science lab and you prove... And you can show exactly why it works. You cannot get up on a stage and say this is a fact. Yeah, there's even like 
maybe sort of on topic. Maybe not. Like, the topic of psychics. There have been and you know how I feel about psychics. Here's the thing. They tried to... There was this thing I was watching where they tried to... They, me, um, like, measured the brain waves. Yes. And it's like, it goes to when he was doing a reading, he goes into, like, almost like a sleep mode. Right. Like, he's seeing stuff as if he's actually seeing it. So there is some weird shit with that. Yeah. And this is somebody who also had, like, a brain injury at one point. Sure. But that doesn't mean it's, like, Yeah, they're shit. not reading the future yeah. or doing any of that. No, no. They're... But... <laughs> Anyway, I, I, all right, we're done. I gotta go. People can believe whatever they want. Just don't try and push podcast it as fact. Is, podcast is in. Don't try and push it as fact. We're gonna. This is gonna end up being like another fucking forty-five minutes if I don't. Strangling if I don't just other. pull the kill switch. We'll talk about it on Monday.